Welcome back to part two of beating earrings. So the first part we did do this circle bit where I told you how to do two needle, two needle technique on the circle graph, which isn't too bad, too easy, too easy. But now I'm getting into more of the design section of it, where I got to figure out how I'm gonna lay it out and how basically I add color to this. So this is what I'll be doing. So it is split into four sections, you see, here, 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 and across. Figure out the sound. So it starts here and it spirals, so it does have that movement to it. So every section is different, and I got the beads to fit in there exactly like it should. Which a lot of people are really impressed with. I just kind of do it. Mm, I kind of just guess at it. <laughs> For the most part. But you don't have to do this quarters. Like I said, this is... Like I said, it's splendid force. So if you see that line there, it's makes it do four sections. So I can do from here, and that gold bead starts it here. And then there's the white, then it goes into the color pattern I do, the transition. It goes up, up to here where it meets up and puts against out the gold. And that one's kind of off, but it's fine. Because with the seed beads that I'm using, the size varies. So then I can get smaller beads and have it pushed there so it lines back up correctly. If you do use Mayukas or Dalakas, you can't really do that because the beads don't vary as much. They're more, they're really symmetrical. But with seed beads, they do vary, so I can get some bigger, thicker beads to kind of fill an area, or smaller beads to kind of shrink the area so I can fit more beads into there exactly. So you can kind of see here, I kind of had to stretch the beads a little bit so they're kind of spaced out a little more, but you can't really tell, especially at a distance. So. Anyways, you can be, like I said, you can be into the quarters, quarters, or like this one here. It's done every section. So here, from that quarter section here, and it goes from here, and it does one section, and the eighths. So there's one, and one, and one. From that black to, each from black to black, in these um, eighth inch sections, is the pattern. Even though it looks like it's from here, it's actually from that black to black. And that's how it's done all the way around. Or like this intersection here, it's done from one half to half. All the way I'm doing now, it's quarter to quarter, but to black to black. So depending on what you want to do for your style, you just want to be in that little section and then multiply it around. Or in this case, this one is basically half to half, but I did split it into quarters. From here, you can see. From there, it's the one section to that uh, matte black or matte gray. Is it each section that I did fill in with these uh, bungle beads, beagle beads, which I'll show you later on how to attach those onto the graph. And those are kind of laid out in sections too, as well. So there's one section, one section. But you know. So if you're doing a certain pattern, or if you want to do a certain pattern, it's what you feel is basically necessary. Unlike me, I do for the complex patterns, but you can do basic. So with here, I'm going to start with this section here, that line, that quarter line. Everyone that through. If you have a pencil or a pen or something, you can mark it so then you don't forget what line you're on. So you can put like a little marking and go, or wait, a little marking here, a little marking here, and then go quarter and quarter. I did mess up down that one. So you can kind of see the indications of where the quarters are so you know where to stop at. Or if you're doing do like a half, a quarter design here, you can mark it here. Or you can do like every two and do a third design. So you can do a design to here. Well, it's weird to break it down to kind of sections so let's do it on this one let's say I want to do a design split into quarters do 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 and do do like so All right quarters and I want this quarter and this one pie section here give me one design where it can be like I've transitioned to fire colors as much as you can to here 
then stop you can add more color in between it or just like stripe it with black and white and stop here at these little sections before here and have one solid color so the black and white fire color then like a red or blue or purple turquoise or metallic color in there then you can do the opposite from here and down so each of these like marks do have like a little indication of where you can stop and start a design or you can go from here in between these two and have that in the middle section have one design here where it goes into fire color and have a green center section and opposite there then you can go around here and then you have a center section there so it's kind of you can break it down into like mini sections and just flip the design back and forth or else just have design spiral such as this so you can have one design going and just keep going with that same design and just have it spiral and it gives it more of a movement So that's how the graph paper works and how I use it. You just gotta figure out that the quarter you can use, or half, or eighth, or sixteenth. It's a lot of math, it's a lot of this and that, but once you get it figured out, you can start using multitude of colors, just like that, into transitions, and know where it is, and you can come all the way around and have it all blend together nicely. Or if not, you can get to a point where you can use points. Then you kind of like step your design down in every section. But this is a far more advanced <laughs> technique and design focus. But anyways, back to the beating. So with what I am doing, I need a gold, white, and gold. Because that's what it is. So it's gold, white, gold. And then two whites. And then there, after that two colors, I can go into my next color, which is yellow. And do a one white which is the last color so the white gold two white yellow white white to be the last color i'll be adding of that color because there's three sections of a color now i can go double yellow since there's no more white i can go into the next color after the double which will be the light orange and back to yellow because now the yellow is the last color because it's a three section color then I can go into a double orange and add my next color, which will be dark orange, which is a single bead. And then the last color of the light orange, and then double dark or dark yellow orange, and then one red. So then that's how I kind of blend the sections, the transition. So you can see it there. Like I said, there's three colors of one of the white, then there's three colors of the yellow, and three colors of the orange. And now, since I did that red, it's to be the last dark orange after that. So, last dark orange, then I double it with another two reds, then I add my next color to maroon. And then the last red goes on. Then from there, I can double it to the maroon. I'm going to add my next color, since it's no more red, it'll be black. And one maroon, since this is the last maroon, it'll be double black. And then gold. Gold will actually transition back into white. So it's kind of that in-between color. So add the gold, add the last white, then add double gold. Which will be the point where it butts together and adds the white. So then it starts the pattern over again from white to the transition back into the darker fire colors. So you can see there. So I'll kind of hold it there so you guys take a quick look at it. If I need to pause it here and kind of write it down, or if you guys want to do that on some other projects, then that's the pattern I use. <laughs> One pattern. But, anyways, same thing with beading, two needle. So, with here, I want to start with that line because it'd be doubled right here ooh that's a bad example here just so it's right here doubled so I start here on that side and work my way around just the same thing like before you want to tack that first bead down make sure it's pretty well just secured enough I use my pinky my, my fingernail so if it need to guide it in place sorry it's a little too the string's a little too curly then i use my fingernail to kind of guide the needle in place but with this 
since it's all colors, you can actually start with a gold and then go two beads over, which is the next gold color in white. Go next two, beat of white, double white. So with colors, it's a lot easier to see where your beads need to go through. So with this, you want to kind of push the beads forward a little bit. So like that, I'm pushing the beads forward just ever so slightly. Even though I know it's going to fit in this area, the beads do vary in size, like I said. And sometimes it can be all too big. See like that orange there is a big orange compared to the yellows. And these whites are the same as the yellow, but you look here to the dark orange, it's small with the red, it's small. So then I'm not really too sure exactly how many you're gonna fit in there. If I have too many big beads or too many small beads. So it's kind of a guessing game until you get to the end here. So I'll go around just tacking. And I'll show you once I get to that quarter section. So here, like I said, the eighth to pi section here. If you're just doing a small section there, of, like, say you just want to do orange, then you could flip the design here and come back across and do it to the next section here. So that yellow, white, and orange, you add here and you'll be that color and that's the color section. If you want to do that. But with me, I'm just going around using the one solid color. Are these transitional colors all around? Fire colors, sunset colors, whatever you prefer to call them. All I know is that they're transitional. So with this, I am very, very close to fitting them in there exactly as I need. So I'm kind of pushing them into position just so I can get my bead to line up. So here I can be a little forceful so that that so it's kind of off a little bit so I can kind of force it into place with my nail. I'm not putting a lot of force into it where I'm kind of like really pushing on the thread just enough to work a line up for me. So there, you can see there it's lined up kind of right there it's lined up a little bit. So next time I go through I get some smaller beads. Kind of pick through my bead to get some smaller ones going through. So it's half a bead too big. So I need to go through get some smaller ones. So there it's a little too big because some of these beads are bigger, like I said. And it is pushing the piece out more. Which I can go through and get some smaller ones, like some smaller yellows, and pick through my bead to my bead soup kind of thing. And find some smaller yellows, find some smaller reds and oranges. But you can see the orange is quite big compared to that red. And that orange there is quite wide. But the black is pretty narrow in color. So if I find smaller and narrow yellows and oranges, then I can fit that next space through. But anyways, that's how I go through two needle to get that section all the way through. So you kind of just fit it through all around, go get your beads various variations. But if you have that problem where your bead is too big, then you can just take it off. If you don't want to mess with that and try to do that, you can just take the bead off, center there, and have it off center. So that kind of might match up with that. Just know that you gotta kind of grow your beads out and space them out a little more. You don't have to be exactly that. But with me, since I already have this one done, I have to match it. So that's the reason why. But if you're doing this, you wanna not really mess with that. You wanna mess with fixing the beads or having that guess that you can just take one bead out and have it there and there like that. And just do the same pattern around just with one less gold bead. And it'll fit in there perfectly, exactly. Just for your next project, or next side, make sure you're doing the same thing. But anyways, that's the process and you get to that. And then, 
from there I'll show you on the next video how to add these your bungle beads beetle beads whatever you call them into it then do the pattern after that which will turn into that so stay tuned and I'll show you that in the next video I don't want to get you too carried away and put too much detail into it or too much information to one video I'm trying to break it down to sections so it's easier for you guys to understand and follow through or follow a certain section thanks for watching I hope you guys enjoyed bye